Hey, what's going on, y'all? So, hey, a couple of weeks ago, I bought two of these uh, WF4734s from Epson right off of their website in their clearance and closeout section. Um, the plan was to get them to replace these 3640s that I have. Um, I was able to get it to print using the cartridges, the 252XL cartridges from the 7710 and the 3640. I was able to put them into the 4734 using some cardboard shims and uh, modifying the cartridges a little bit. Um, I did get the uh, the empty refill cartridges for the 4734 in, and I want to show you the differences now. As you can tell right off the rip, it doesn't have any chips on the front. Uh, like these uh, 252XL cartridges, those are the cartridges for the 7710. It doesn't have any of the chips on the front. I'm not sure if you have to prime them at all, but I'm going to go through the priming process like I would with these anyways. But uh, yeah, stay tuned. So we'll go ahead and uh, get these filled up and see if we can get some prints going and get it converted back over to uh, sublimation ink. Okay, so once we got our cartridges filled up and primed, uh, it's time to put them into the printer now. Let me explain uh, what I mean by prime. Once you go from an empty cartridge um, and you still have this film on the bottom here covering the nozzle, you'll have this film. Once you uh, fill your cartridge with ink, you don't put it in the printer yet. You want to make sure that film stays on there. You're going to move your uh, fill plug from the fill hole to the vent hole, keep it plugged. And what we're gonna do is prime this by putting your ink, your syringe into your fill hole. And then what I do is I just pull this up on the plunger and let it go down by itself. And what it's gonna do is force that air out and push the ink into all the chambers that it needs to get into. So I do it like twice, sometimes three times, and just let that plunger fall on its own and that'll get the ink into the chambers that it needs to get into and that's how you effectively prime your cartridges and that'll keep you from doing so many head cleanings trying to use a head cleaning to move the air out of the cartridge all right so now that we got these all filled up we'll get them into the printer and see if we can get some prints going Okay, so we'll go ahead and get this uh, this ink changed out. Now, I am throwing a a warning sign saying that the uh, the maintenance box is near and it's in. Um, I do have a couple of maintenance boxes on hand. We'll go ahead and switch those out too. We'll go ahead and replace these ink cartridges. And so what we'll be doing is taking the original ink cartridges out and then we'll be replacing it with these uh, refillable refillable cartridges here now again they don't have any chips on them so again you have to have uh, chipless firmware running in your 4734 your 4700 series 4730 series to uh, get this to work so we'll get these in here now it doesn't have that double chamber on the uh, like it does on the original ink but these things hold like almost I want to say almost 20 20 milliliters of ink so they'll they'll last you a while before you have to uh, before you have to refill them again these go in smooth click right in there again they don't have any chips on them so and I have I have a lot of sets of these, so I'll put a link in the description of how you can get these directly from me. Now, it's not going to register anything in here, but um, once you close the scanner unit down, it should register that the, uh, that the replacement is complete here in a second. So I'll tell you that the replacement completed. We'll click OK, and uh, we'll go ahead and switch out this uh, switch out this um, 
this maintenance box too. So we'll move around to the back now on the back side. Oh shit. On the back side, there's a cover. So we'll just go ahead and open this cover up. And then the maintenance box pulls right out. And you can see it's all gross down up in there. Anyway, that's what happens when you do a lot of head cleanings, all your ink flushes down into these uh into these boxes and it basically just has a bunch of sponges in there that soaks up all the ink. So that's the old one and that's what a new one looks like. So we'll go ahead and put this new one in there. Slides in there. We'll put the cover back on it. I gotta excuse all my my camera work here, man. You know I don't, I don't really be doing this type of stuff. So, all right, all right, got it together. So come back over here. I tell you, it's not installed. We just installed it real quick. Next, click done, and now it doesn't have the maintenance box. Um, the maintenance box warning so we'll go ahead and close this out and what that lets me know is that even though it has this chipless firmware on it that it still um, it still does a, a a counter for the maintenance box so keep that in mind if you're gonna be doing these uh, uh, 4734s so now you know, we have all the ink installed maintenance box is good to go we'll uh, uh, go ahead and get a purge file ready so we can get the uh, the ink flowing, the sublimation ink flowing, and get some of that uh, pigment ink out of the ink head, uh, out of the print head. So you want to always opt to do a purge sheet um, instead of a head cleaning when you can. Uh, the head cleaning, like I said before, it'll. Uh, continue to fill up your waste box or your maintenance box and um, a purge will get the the ink flowing out of the uh, the print head the old ink out of the print head and start pushing the new ink uh, into the print head from the cartridges so always want to do a purge file um, if you can instead of the um, instead of the multiple 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 head cleanings one or two is okay but when you start doing numbers into like the teens and the 20s, you, something's wrong. So unless you have like a, a CIS S kit or something like that where you have to push a lot of ink through the lines, um, you probably shouldn't do so many head cleanings. But anyways, we got all this stuff going through. So we'll start um, uh, getting some prints together so that we can get some sublimation going on this uh, 4734. Okay, so we have a print finishing up here. One of my customers. Uh, we're gonna be doing one of the pet mug shots for her. And um, <clears throat> we're gonna get this onto the press here and see what it looks like after we get done pressing it. So we'll be back after we get done uh, putting this on the substrate. It's going to go on a, one of my aluminum signs here. So we'll get this, uh, get that pressed up and uh, we'll be back. Okay, so I'll get this up and see exactly how it came out so ooh. there we go came out pretty good actually came out really good can't see anything because I got shop lights in here but yeah came out
really, really well for her. She's gonna really like that. So, again, we're pressing, uh, we're printing on the um, Epson Workforce Pro WF4734. Um, you can do sublimation with it with the right uh, cartridges and the chipless firmware. Again, I'll put a link in the description of where you can get how you can get them directly from me.